Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liz. And this is the Mach-E Vlog. And today we are inside the all-electric Ford e-Transit. And we're gonna check it all out. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> The 2022 all-electric e-transit is the first of two all-electric vehicles purpose-built for Ford Pro commercial customers. It's available in eight configurations, including three roof heights, three lengths, cargo van, a chassis cab, and cutaway models, and it ranges in price from $46,295 to $50,185, oddly specific. It has a range of 126 miles, and there's a reason for that that we'll get into. DC fast charging up to 115 kilowatts, with 15 to 80 percent fast charging taking around 34 minutes. It also has around 487 cubic feet of cargo space. Not too shabby. <laughs> Welcome home! <laughs> so the e-transit of course is a work truck, work vehicle as well. You got your power options, multiple power options here. And one of the cool things about the e-transit is it's based off of the transit of course. And all of the same uh, like rack systems, shelving, all of that can be used in the e-transit. So it's sort of like compatible with a lot of systems that are already out there. The only exception is if anything has to bolt into the floor extensively, that would not be possible because there's a battery under there this time. So let's walk up to the front and let us check out the driver's section. This is oh, this one is neat. It has a little sliding door. Okay. So this is very similar to a regular E-Transit. No key detected. <laughs> mm. So we don't have a key, we can't power this on. Very similar to a regular uh, transit van, which Ford has been making for years, has some elements that remind me of the Mach-E, the gear shift, which that's a very Ford thing. Um, we have some power options, USB. So this is very much like the, the regular transit so it has a sync screen here. Um, we can't power it on, but you can do a lot of the same things as you can do if you're familiar with the Mach-E or seen any of our Mach-E videos. So you can do navigation and, and control the ventilation and uh, climate control. Um, it's a little bit more basic than the Mach-E, but also very similar as far as like, you know, you have like your, your same controls are available here has uh, voice activated so you can do like forward sync commands uh, as well as connect like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and access the through the button or just using voice commands. Um, very, very simple interior. Of course, it's a, a work vehicle, so the, the plastics are a little bit harder than in the F-150 Lightning or the Mach-E, but very functional. I just noticed there's a 120 volt, 20 amp, AC power below the passenger seat. The F-150 Lightning has its own uh, motors and battery pack that's were designed separate. This has a Mach-E motor as well as the Mach-E battery from the standard range Mach-E. So it, a lot of it has been translated over to the E-Transit. The range is far less. It's 120 some miles of range max and that's basically Ford has done surveys. They've worked with actual companies that need an e-transit and determined that that's about the, the range that people uh, need in a vehicle like this. The average current transit does about 75 miles a day. So 120 some miles will exceed that and will work for a lot of those work purposes. And of course, the, the range is far less than the Mach-E, and it's because it's a, it's a way bigger vehicle. It's going to be carrying a lot of stuff in the back, and they don't want to, you know, just say it could get 300 miles of range if you, you know, go bare bones and don't have anything in the back. It's a work vehicle. It's going to be used to work, and uh, 120 miles, 20 plus miles of range should be adequate. I know this is not for this purpose, but as far as comfort features, there are quite a few there. 
is a cup holder right there. Absolutely enormous shade. So this really blocks out the sun, makes driving pretty comfortable, I'm sure. And then another cup holder right there. And there's one on this side as storage well. Storage or a cup holder there. One on that side, another storage down there as well. And of course you have your USB charger. So a couple comfort features for the driver as well, but this really does seem like a, a well-rounded utility sort of vehicle. The parking brake is on. It's really weird because people keep getting in the vehicle in the back while we're here. So it feels like we are making deliveries. Yeah. You know, like someone's taking boxes off or whatever. Like, I feel like we should put our hats on and go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we should. On to the next thing. Which, one of the things that's interesting, uh, I checked out the e-transit before. It has some really cool connected features that you might not necessarily think about in a utility vehicle, but make a lot of sense. So the idea is that fleet managers can monitor the vehicle, monitor like the charge levels, but they can also ma uh, monitor how it's being driven. So if you are a company owner and worried about how people are treating your vehicles or just driving out there in the general public, this will tell you, are they taking curves too fast, hitting the brakes too hard, accelerating too fast, and can manage that and report that back to the fleet manager. And also, you know, if you have precious cargo in the back, if you're doing cake delivery and your driver is the one that's doing the harsh braking, you can say, you're the one that's ruining our cakes or whatever. <laughs> so very cool stuff. There's also, uh, the fleet management can do things like uh, centrally manage the charging so that if you are at a fleet facility and you're trying to charge 20 vehicles, what you may want to do is have them charge at different times so that you keep the load down. You can also do things like if somebody's charging at home, you can monitor how much they're charging at home and then the fleet manager can then therefore compensate them for the charging that they're doing. It can also obviously like manage the charging while they're out and about, like if they have to stop at a DC fast charger and have a centrally build account so that they don't have to carry like the, the gas cards like they would with a normal transit, they can just plug in and then that information can be tracked and then build back to a fleet manager. So lots of, lots of very cool features that are built in for the fleet people that will be using the e-transit. And yeah, it's not an exciting vehicle like the Mach-E GT or something, you know, something beautiful and flashy, but this is a really needed vehicle. And it's, I think it's exciting, even though it's not flashy. Yeah, very exciting for the fact that during the EV transition, we need these type of vehicles to uh, be out there and start making uh, a, a big dent in the amount of pollution that's being dumped out there on just simple day-to-day -day tasks. This auto show is in New York where obviously there's a lot of uh, delivery vehicles and work vehicles that we've seen already this morning that are like this. And the worst part about it is a lot of times they pull up, they idle for that five or 10 minutes while somebody is you know, going in and picking something up, dropping off packages. And instead of idling, with you know while it's polluting it can just sit there and you just have it in its off state it was very using very little energy so yeah. very cool for reducing emissions and those type of uh, environments and then if you actually you know like have a table saw or, or something like that you can plug it in and operate it and one of the cool features about the vehicles you can sort of also set it so like if you need 20 miles to get back to the shop you can say like, I can run the table saw, but don't let me go down below like 25 miles of range because I need to get back to the shop. So it, it, will, it, will, it will monitor your, your battery energy usage so you don't get your vehicle stranded. Um, or, you know, you can say like, route me to a fast charger because I didn't save enough. So lo lots of really neat features to make this vehicle very useful and very manageable for companies and fleets. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that Ford should lend us one to drive around in. And we could do deliveries, like Toys for Tots or... Yeah, we'll like do a charity something, delivery. A charity delivery. We should... Let's go ask someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be really fun. What do you guys think? If you like that idea, then put a teddy bear down below teddy for bear? Toys for Tots. Oh. Okay. Or add it like, what do you, how do you do charity? Dollar sign? No. no teddy bear. Teddy, teddy bears. Bear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, get out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, very traditional door handle, just uh, traditional. Not a trigger. Ooh, there's a really nice step here. <laughs> and then you whacked yourself. Yeah, but I didn't want to open the door. Oh no, that's as far as it goes, so good to know. And if you're wondering how tall it is, I'm not a tall person, but you can stand completely upright back here and there's tons of room. And then it's just a quick step out and you're good. Well, that was our time with the 2022 All Electric E Transit. Let us know what you thought about this vehicle and about this video down below. If you liked it, do be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down, but if you really liked it, you should stick around and subscribe right now. A big thank you to the people who seem to really like us, our patrons, especially our unbridled patrons, Frankie M, Andy Ross, Marlene Strickland, Michael Bazaruski, Larry Kuhn, Eric Lienemann, Joshua Eng, Lester Marla, Jonathan Ezor, and Bill Greentree, and our engaged patrons, Todd Mason, Midlife Marine, and Lewis McFarland. Also, a big thank you to our Whisper patrons, too. If you're interested in joining our Patreon and supporting this channel, you can do so down below. Oh, and don't forget, if you do want us to do that Toys for Tots in an e-transit, then leave that teddy bear down below. So that's it for us now. Just remember that whatever you drive, even if it isn't a cargo van filled with teddy bears for kids, enjoy the ride. Bye!